This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey guys, my name is Mike and welcome back to my channel. Well, if you are new to 3D modeling, you're going to hear things like uh, polygon meshes, quads, triangles, n-gons, and all that cool stuff. Okay, so what is all that? How do you deal with it and how do you get on the right path so you can make proper models and get on with whatever you're working on? Okay, so that's what this uh, video is about. If you know all this stuff, you can skip this one. But if you're new to 3D modeling, check this out. Okay, here we go. Okay guys, well here we go. This is probably the most boring tutorial you've ever seen, but nevertheless it's important to know. So, uh, you know, just uh, get through this and I promise you it will be helpful for you. Uh, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about meshes, we're going to talk about clean meshes, uh, polygons, quads, tries, and how to get that all sorted and fixed. Okay. So I'm going to assume here that you have no idea about any of this and I'm just going to start with the basics so everybody can follow this. If you know all about this, obviously you can skip it. Okay. So to begin with, uh, what is a mesh? A mesh is a combination of uh, polygons that forms an object. Okay. So I'll show you. I'm just going to jump into my perspective mode here and I'll turn on my grid. So let's go to display and grid. And I'm just going to take a simple object. Let's do a cube. Okay. Now, is this an object? Yes. Is it a mesh? Yes, it is. Is it a polygon mesh? Mesh. Sorry. Yes, it is. So I'll explain. Um, this is a 3D object. We're talking about 3D modeling. Uh, but why is this 3D? Well, it has. Uh, it's 3D because every point in this object, and I'll right-click go to vertex. For example, this guy has three coordinates to uh, in space, right? If I switch to the front view right here, you see the uh, little thing down here, the green arrow is pointing up, which means that if I right click and go to object mode, moving up and down is moving over the Y axis. Okay. And that is one dimension. Moving left and right is the X axis like so. Now, basically, if you would have a picture lying on a flat table, you could move it up and down, left and right. But what you could not do is push it into the table or, you know, have it levitate in the air. Now, in the 3D application, uh, you can also move it. Um, and the best way to show you this is from the top view. You can take this blue arrow and you can move it backwards. Okay. Now, because this is your front view, you don't see the difference, right? But here you do. So you can move it back. Now, that means that every point of this object has a kind of a home address, if you will, X, Y, and Z, all right? Now, because they have three points, it's a 3D point in space, and therefore it's a 3D object. Okay, so back to where we started. So is this an object? Yes, it is. Is this a polygon object? Yes, it is. And um, it's polygon because it has more than one gons, okay? And you will uh, run into the uh, name n-gon later, okay? But for now, let's just remember that this object is made out of vertices, edges, and faces. So if I right-click and go to vertex, this is a point in space, and this is how a computer calculates. It calculates from vertex to vertex. And for example, two vertices connected they're connected in this case through an edge right there. So we've got vertex on the corner here. There we go. We've got edge right here. And if you connect multiple, then this will end up in a face. All right. So we've got that all covered. So we've got a mesh, we've got a vertex, we've got edges, and we've got faces. Okay. Now in this case, this face has four corners, one, two, three, and four, also known as a quad. Now, are there faces that have uh, more or less than four faces? Absolutely. And for that, I'll just uh, pull up a quick image here so I can demonstrate. So we'll just go to uh, the front view here. I'm just going to hide this guy for a sec. Uh, I'm going to go to my uh, channel box here and I'm going to turn on this layer. OK, we'll turn off the display grid. Okay, so this is a model created uh, with triangles or tries, okay? And you can see that they all have three points and it's all connected. The car on the right hand is made by quads, okay? 
Now, and then in the middle of here, you have something called an n-gon. Now, before we get into the n-gon, what's the deal with triangles? And should I model in triangles or not? Well, there's no specific advantage over modeling with triangles, uh, with the exception that there are some software programs that require you to do that. They will not accept anything else than triangulated meshes. So in that case, you should. But in my personal, uh, my personal preference is to not do that ever, unless I absolutely have to, because I really don't see the advantage and uh, when you are modeling, and I'll show you that later, um, it's very hard to see what you're working on because you have all these diagonal lines, and I'll show you later, okay? But you can do it if you need to. Now, this is triangles, this is quads, and this is an n-gon. n stands for a numeric value, and in this case, more than four. So I have a face with more than four vertices, one, two, three, four, five in this case, but that could be 10, 50, 500, whatever, all right? So let's turn this layer off. We're gonna go back to our view and we're gonna turn back on our grid. Uh, let's see, where is it? Right here. And I'll just demonstrate, okay? So what if I take a simple quad, uh, sorry, simple cube, and I'll just hit Control A. I'll subdivide this, so let's do 10 by 10 by 10, there we go. Then I have a uh, polygon mesh made out of quads and it has a subdivision level of 10 by 10 by 10, that's fine. Now let's say I'm working in a software package that requires this model to be triangulated. Now how do I do that? Well, pretty simple. I select this object and I go up to mesh and triangulate. And there we go. Now if I hit four for wireframe mode, you can see that it looks very complicated, very dense. And if I want to work on something specific in this cube, it's kind of hard to see, right? So that's why I try to avoid that. Okay. Now I'm gonna hit Control Z to go back. And we're back in quads right now, as you can see. All right. And what I'll do next is I will demonstrate um, and guns, okay? Before I do that, can you have a model where you have triangles and uh, quads? Absolutely. Is that a problem? No, it's not. Um, and guns, okay. So we're gonna delete this guy. We're gonna take a polygon cylinder, like so. I'm gonna hit five for shaded mode. I'll hit Control A to pull up my attribute editor. And I'm gonna go in, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete the caps, like so, all right? Now, are there any n-gons in this model? Absolutely. Where are they? Well, if I go right-click to face and I select this guy, you have a polygon face with a bunch of vertices. If I right-click and get a vertex, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, all the way around, okay? Now, like I said, that's not good. So, when should you avoid n-gons? Well, to keep it simple, I would say pretty much always, all right? Um, why are n-gons a problem? Well, depending on how your computer needs to calculate it, if you uh, use n-gons in something that will be deformed, like a character, um, it will have trouble calculating that. Um, it will be an additional strain on your system. Your uh, rendering may not turn out okay. You'll get noise in your final product and so forth. So a whole bunch of trouble, okay? Um, there are situations where it's okay to accept them, uh, but usually if you have a basic model with a single render shot, you're not gonna deform it, not gonna animate it, and not gonna use it in a game. In some cases, it's okay. But you know, uh, like I said, just try to avoid them altogether. That's best, all right? Okay, so we talked about meshes, we talked about uh, polygons, quads, tries, and all that kind of stuff. So. What if we have an n-gon in our model? How do we fix that? Now, luckily, Maya has an option called cleanup, and that's what we're gonna look at next. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna right-click and go to object mode. We're gonna select this guy, and we're gonna go up to mesh and cleanup. All right. Now, when we pull up this menu, you have the uh, cleanup effects, you have fix by tessellation, and you have remove geometry. Now, let's look at these three sections first. Here you have the option 
when it comes to cleanup. Do you want the problem areas to be selected or do you want them to be cleaned up by Maya? Okay, so if you want to go in and manually adjust any problem, you would select this guy. If you want Maya to fix the problem for you, you would do this guy. Now keep in mind that whenever Maya fixes that for you, you never know what you're gonna get, okay? So if you are a little bit more advanced, try to do that by fixing that yourself. But for now, we're gonna go with this guy, okay? And then second, the scope. Do you want to apply this cleanup to the mesh that you have selected or to every polygon uh, mesh in your scene, right? Now I'm just gonna go with this guy, all right? Then basically you have the option, fix it or remove it. Now, if you click remove it, uh, Maya will literally take away faces from your model. I typically don't want that, so I'm not gonna use this, but you can if you like. So I'm gonna go with fix by tessellation. And then you're gonna have to identify, so what do you want to have fixed? Well, I want to clean up Right? I want it to be applied on what I have selected and I want to fix any faces with more than four sides. Now we already identified that this guy up here is the one and actually down here obviously as well. These two are problem areas. So I'll just start by identifying them. So I'm just gonna hit select, I'm not gonna fix, just select and I'm gonna say okay, four, uh, faces with more than four sides, apply. And immediately you see that this turns orange and so does that. So these are two problem areas, right? So now I'm gonna to go to my cleanup option and instead of just selecting them, I want it to be fixed. So now I'm gonna hit apply again. And when I do that, you see that Maya comes up with the solution of adding triangles. So if you look at each individual face right now, for example here, you see that each face has three vertices. So you've got a combination of quads and triangles which is fine because we don't have any end guns, okay? So that is basically all there is to it, uh, specifically when we're talking about the basics. So hopefully this helps you to understand a little bit more what meshes are, uh, vertices, edges, faces, uh, a polygon object, and what is a clean mesh, okay? So if you have any questions, as always, just leave them in the comment sections or send an email to mh-tutorials at hotmail.com. And that said, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.